Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Liam and this is my hobby room and welcome back, first of all. Uh, today we're going to be working on a very special kit and that kit is the HGUC Gira Zulu Angelo Sapper use from Unicorn Gundam. Actually, I reviewed this kit on the Gunpla Network, but uh, I'm going to be building it and modifying it and, and doing all the painting and stuff here as I usually do on Liam's hobby room. So uh, we're going to do that together. Uh, there's quite a bit of cool stuff in this box, so I'm pretty excited to, to work on it. The kit went together very, very simply. There's not a whole lot of, uh, if you've built a Bandai kit, you know exactly what to expect. Um, really, really beautiful molded detail. Uh, lots of interesting painting you're gonna have to do. Big ol' sticker sheet. Gonna put that up top here. Big ol' sticker sheet. Usually, if you have a big sticker sheet, what it means is you're gonna have to be doing a lot of detail painting. If that kind of thing isn't your thing, you might want to give this kit a pass, but it's really not that hard, and we're gonna do it together. So, you know, you watch this video and you'll be like, yeah, if that idiot can do it, then I could probably do it too. Uh, and you're right, you can. So, I closed up all the seam lines, I removed all the mold lines, I did a bit of sanding here and there. The parts that I wanna go over today are the problem pieces, so to speak, that might take a little bit of extra TLC, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna show you how I tenderly and lovingly care for these parts uh, and make them look what I think looks good. So that's what we'll do. We're gonna start doing that. I'll be sure to outline all the tools that I'm using and put them in the description below. Now before we get into anything, you can get all these awesome kits and tools and supplies at bchobbies.com. That's the store that I work for. We're a beautiful hobby shop uh, and we have lots of cool stuff, lots of Gunpla. If you have any questions about Gunpla or tools, supplies, anything, put them down in the comments and I will be happy to answer them for you. Or come on into BC Hobbies or check us out online at bchobbies.com, you big silly. <laughs> All right, so we went over the model kit fairly quickly, and now we're just gonna be taking a look at a few of the parts that I want to modify. Uh, one is the shield. I'd just like to put some plastic card in here, uh, detail it up a bit, just to fill in these, these hollow spaces. Oh yeah, we're gonna glue that eventually uh, after we're done painting, but as you can see, there is detail in, in the in behind the shield here, but I find it just looks kind of weird. It looks like uh, that one Tupperware lid that you can't find the rest of the Tupperware for. Uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna fix that up with some plastic card. And here I just have some point five millimeter plastic card that I cut down. Now we're just gonna cut it and put it inside of this thing and do a bit of scribing as well. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna be uh, kind of fixing up this cannon here. As you can see, maybe you can't, uh, let me just get my spudger, my handy dandy spudger. Um, so right here, there's this pipe that's molded in, but there's also this piece of plastic that's connecting the uh, pipe to the rest of the barrel. It's not there in the animation and it looks kind of lame on the model. So we're gonna saw that out and sand it down. What we might end up doing is just sawing off this entire pipe and then reconnecting it after. It's actually probably the easiest way to go about doing this. We have the radar spike here and you can see another piece that has to be cut out right here. Or not has to be, None, you don't have to do any of this. I just think it'll look better. Uh, and right here as well, uh, there's another piece here. We have a line that's going all the way around this piece because this is one plastic piece inserted into the radar spike. Uh, so what we're gonna do is take some putty and fill in this line all around this radar spike here. And then uh, we can sand it down and it'll look like it wasn't even there. Isn't that exciting? Uh, and then we've just got a couple other elements. The barrel is easy, it's got a vented barrel, so we're just gonna drill out this piece here, sand it down, uh, give it some three-dimensionality. Uh, and then we've got this piece here, which uh, it only really has this one little spot that we need to, uh, to saw out and sand down. But other than that, the kit looks pretty great and there's really not very much modification aside from mold lines and seam lines that need to be closed. So uh, we don't really have that much work to do today, but it's a good example of a variety of different tasks that I can walk you through and show you how I do them. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're gonna start with the easiest task first, which is just drilling out this vented barrel. Uh, so you can see here the vent, and on this side, same thing. So we're just gonna drill right through, uh, and we're just gonna make a little pilot hole, and then uh, use a bigger drill to get the rest of it out of there, and then clean it up with a chisel or a hobby knife or whatever you got lying around. Uh, now just be sure when you're drilling that you don't accidentally drill into your hand. Uh, so as you can see right now, I have my finger on the back of the piece, and if I were to full force my drill through there, I'd drill right into my hand. It'd be really painful. So we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna drill into our hands today. What we are gonna do is just uh, very gently, very gently just drill into this piece until we get a nice wide hole to, uh, to saw around. 
So now that we've got our pilot holes, we're just going to switch to a larger drill and uh, drill out the rest of it. Now I did make a mistake. I accidentally drilled through and put a hole on this side. That's okay. I can fill that up with putty. And I am going to drill with a barrel as well, not just the size of a vented barrel. So um, yeah, this is this is what I do in this exciting. Now uh, the tool I'm using, if you are unaware, is called a pin vise drill. Uh, it is just a hand-powered drill that you turn in your palm. Uh, it is a very, very handy tool to have. If you don't have one and you like to build plastic models, then you should absolutely go and get one because uh, you, it's a miracle you don't have one already. The next thing we're going to use is a hobby knife. Now, make sure you have a nice fresh blade and be very careful not to cut yourself. And then you can just cut away some of the plastic in there. Now, uh, sometimes this can be a little bit difficult and if you press too hard, you might end up jumping the, uh, jumping the piece and cutting yourself. So you want to be very careful. If you find it difficult, you can also put a uh, pair of nippers in there and just clip up some of the plastic. Now, if you find what I'm doing interesting, if you find uh, modifying gunplay interesting, then what you should do is you should take a look at some of my other videos, man, because I have a whole bunch of them. And uh, in a lot of them, I go over modifications on model kits, like the one I did on the Kampfer. Uh, there's some modifications in there. Uh, the Juwagu has a good, uh, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll put these in the, in the video, little little time card up here somewhere. Uh, and those ones, um, you know, those are pretty good to watch. Alright, so now we have a nice fluted barrel, or vented barrel, I think it's called a fluted barrel, I don't know. So we're just going to put this little uh, file in here, sand it down a little bit, just to make sure it's uh, nice and clean. And as I mentioned before, I did accidentally drill a piece out here, so I'm going to fix that with a bit of plastic card and some cement. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a sec, it's super easy. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of move on. Alright, so now to fix this little mess up I made here, uh, we're just going to cut a piece of plastic card, jam it in there, cement it down, and then sand that as well. So I'll just cut a piece of plastic card. As you can see, polystyrene plastic cuts uh, really easily. Now we'll take some plastic cement, and uh, this is the quick type cement, so we're just going to put some of that in there. Put this in here as well. Plastic putty is amazing at covering any imperfections or um, modifying things. It's, it's great. It's great. I use it all the time. Pretty much every video, I'm sure you've seen it all over my kits, or at least in the background of the video. And uh, in many of my videos, I actually explain what it's for. Um, and yeah, what I'm using, what I'm doing here is just covering up some of the um, imperfections in the plastic that I've made as I've been sanding it. Uh, and, and filing it down. And this stuff uh, is lacquer based and it dries very quickly and then you can uh, sand it. Now let's take a look at some of the rest of the stuff. Oh yeah, there's also some hollow space at the back of this little ray dome. So I might fill that in with some putty, but it is kind of hard to see. So mm, you never know, I might not. So now we're gonna saw out some of these um, leftover plastic bits here. I'm gonna use my saw. Um, you can get all kinds of hobby saws at BC Hobbies. We got lots of cool stuff. So to make sure I'm not going to be ruining anything as I saw into it. These teeth might actually be a bit big for this job. So we might end up using a chisel. Eh, nah, I think we got it. We'll be alright. We'll be alright folks. Don't worry about me. And I'll just take my nippers to do the rest. Make it super easy. So I'm just going to sand this down, clean it up a bit, and then we're good to start working on the rest of the rifle, or cannon, sorry. And uh, it, it'll be a better example then of what exactly it is I'm doing. This just happened to be the first one I reach for because it's the easiest one. Smallest little piece. So again, we've got some excess areas to cut out of here. This one I can just use my nippers for. So uh, this piece here, as you can see, is uh, there's a little um, radar antenna that's attached to it. Now, if I just cut it right away, what's going to happen is it's going to push this piece away uh, and it stress the plastic a little bit. So what I'm actually going to do first is I'm going to take my saw and cut into it a bit, uh, and that will relieve some of the tension. So I'm going to cut this away like so, and then I will show you up close what it is I'm doing. So. Now, we have a little bit more detail. It looks a little more natural. Uh, you have your little radar antenna, uh, the radar spike, and then there's another little portion right at the end where we're gonna do the exact same thing we just did. This time, just gonna use my nippers because there really isn't that much. Actually, I'm, <laughs> now that I said that, I am gonna have to saw a little bit, I think, but uh, okay, it's not a big deal. Alrighty. And here is our radar spike. Uh, looks to me much better now. Obviously, this might not bother everybody, but these kinds of little, uh, little, what did you call? I guess plastic foibles uh, bother me because it's like the safety flags on a V fin. Snip those off, man, because they don't look very good. 
Uh, so now I'm back with the rest of the cannon here and we're going to be cutting out this connective piece. Uh, you can kind of see it here connecting this tube to the barrel. Um, it just looks dumb and it's not supposed to be there so I'm just going to cut it away. Uh, we're actually just going to be clipping this tube off and I'm going to be putting an aftermarket tube on there because I think it'll look better. So let's just get rid of this. We don't need it. Get out of there. Come on. Oh, that went somewhere. And now we can just clean up the barrel with our hobby knife. And then we'll sand it down, make sure it, uh, it looks nice. If you like what I do here on this channel, make sure to like the video down in the thing. Oh, you know where it is. And subscribe to the channel as well because I make lots of Gunpla content. I have lots of Gunpla content on here. So if you like Gunpla and modeling and, and just generally nerding out about stuff like this, uh, then you won't be disappointed. Stick around. I think you belong here. Okay, so here is the cannon put together. Uh, obviously, we still have some sanding to do, but uh, with the tube clipped away, we're now going to be adding an aftermarket tube. <laughs> a special tube. Um, so this is the hard point which the tube is supposed to attach to, and then here is where the tube would normally come out. So what I'm going to do is drill a little hole there. We're going to take like a piece of pipe or wire or something. I've, I'm sure I've got some kicking around somewhere, and just um, bend it into shape and put it in there. So I found this in one of my drawers, it's just some uh, plastic tubing, I don't know where it came from, um, but uh, we sell lots of this kind of stuff at BC Hobbies, you can check that out. I'll link some in the description that are essentially the same thing for you. Uh, anyways, we're just going to casually eyeball the distance, with this tube's gonna go, about there, a little bit longer than we want it to be, or the, than we think it's gonna be, just in case. Uh, and then we're going to take a, our pin vise drill, handy dandy pin vise drill, and we're going to drill a tiny little hole. Uh, my pilot hole here still is a bit small, but this is gonna stay. We just need to feed some of this through. And there we are, there's our energy cable and the cannon. I think this looks a lot better, and when we paint it, uh, it'll look even better than that. So. Um, this is essentially done. These mods are done. So for now, we're going to put this aside and we can work on our shield, our little Tupperware lid shield. So the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, draw out the outline of the piece that's going to be going in here. I have a little mechanical pencil here. And since I've sanded this piece of plastic card, uh, the mechanical pencil will actually be able to draw on it, which is nice. So that's about to the edge there. Again, I'm kind of eyeballing things. Uh, we're going to get a little more exact in a second here but I'm not too concerned about it just yet. Uh, so we're gonna cut this piece out first, get a ruler or, or some kind of straight edge. This thing has cork on the back, so it's kind of nice. And just some nice light pressure cuts, and eventually you'll cut right through the plastic card. This is 0.5 millimeter. You can get much heavier plastic cards if you need them for other things, but generally for, for gunpla modification, you don't need to go too heavy. Um, unless you're like, you know, building this massive chunk of something, even then I'd actually recommend layering pieces of plastic art on top of one another and then eventually just sanding that down with a file or something. Uh, just because big pieces of plastic art can get warped quite easily uh, and they're uh, kind of difficult to cut, so <laughs> it's just easier to use this. Pretty close to the size we need, but we're gonna have to cut out a few extra pieces. So if you have calipers, you can measure that down. Uh, if not, just eyeball it. Now, if you're eyeballing it, just make sure to cut smaller pieces away at a time because they've cut off a huge piece. Uh, this is, of course, a reductive process. You're going to be uh, going back to the drawing board here, so that's just... And you can save all the little bits you cut out and use them for other stuff. All right, so now I've finished cutting out these pieces of plastic card. I've just sanded down the edges a bit so they fit a little bit better. And I eyeballed this measurement, so it's not perfect, so I am gonna touch it up a little bit off camera because uh, it's hard to do uh, you know, when everything's on camera. But as you can see, they fit in pretty well for eyeballing. It's not bad, right? Uh, and then this thing plugs right onto there, and the shield is now not as hollow. I am gonna do a little bit of scribing on there, add a little bit of plastic to more closely mimic the detail inside, just so I don't break up the actual design of the kit. And then, uh, yeah, we're pretty much done. We can uh, cement these down, and then um, start painting. Now this here is polyester putty, and I know I was using another plastic putty earlier, uh, but the reason I'm switching to this one for this specific task uh, is because this one doesn't have as much shrinkage as the regular uh, basic type putty does. Basic type putty is designed to fill holes and then shrink into them. 
uh, and that is really good for some things, and in other things, not so good. Uh, this is better at creating volume, and that's what we're going to want when we fill the seam line, because as you can see, or maybe you can't see, I don't know how, how well the camera is picking it up, this seam line here is actually quite deep, and there's quite a bit of a, a gap in there. And to fill a gap this big, you want something a little heavier duty than just a thin plastic putty. So what we're going to use is polyester putty, uh, which is kind of a step between, to me, a basic type putty uh, and epoxy putty. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of in the middle there. Uh, so we're just gonna mix some of this up. I have these little mixing trays from Mr. Hobby. I really like these. They're super cheap. We got them at BC Hobby, so I'll put the link down in the description. You should grab some if you're if you're wanting to do any any puttying or paint mixing. I really like them. They're metal. They're easy to clean. So polyester putty, if you've ever seen it, looks like this. Comes in a little tube. Uh, you're gonna want to squirt out a little bit. You'll notice it's quite thick, and we're not actually really gonna need that much. Uh, we close the cap on here. Make sure to close it because it will begin to cure even on its own. Uh, it just won't cure very well. Uh, so you also get this little this little tube, and the goal here is to take this. Oh, I just gotta get this thing off. Is to take this, take a teeny little bit out, and you see it's it's very dark orange. You want to match. You want to mix this into the putty and match the color of the original cap. That's how polyester putty cures and mixes. Oh, my phone's ringing. That's fun. Sorry about that. I just got a phone call, so I had to take that. But now we are back, and I'm just going to be applying this polyester putty that I mixed up with my little metal spudger here onto this uh, this piece. We're going to be closing up some gaps. Now it kind of gets everywhere. You generally don't want this on your skin. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's kind of hard to get off. So uh, I'm just gonna be real careful because I should have put on gloves and then I, I didn't. Now this still will shrink a little bit into these uh, into the gap, but I'm not too concerned about that uh, because um, A, I have a lot of it. I'm just gonna layer it on top here. And uh, B, if I wanted to um, you know add a little bit more putty in there, I can just use to me a basic type putty after this has gone in. So here's the radar spike with all the polyester putty on there. Typically this stuff cures overnight, so we're just going to let that happen. I'll come back tomorrow and we'll sand it all off and then, uh, you know, we'll see what it looks like. I'll show you show you what polyester putty looks like when it's when it's sanded, which is it's just the same. It looks the same, but it'll be cleaner. Ta-da! Okay, so we've got a few pieces here and you can see that I have finished modding them. Uh, really, this is just, this is just clean up. Um, the yellow bits here is all the uh, polyester putty that we just put on. I let that cure overnight and then I just sanded it down with regular sandpaper uh, and now it is nice and flush and all of those little uh, gaps are all filled in. Uh, and then the other changes that we made to this part, of course, uh, are the uh, cutaways here and I just sanded um, those areas down to make them a little bit cleaner so you can now see these little radar uh, antennas. Is that is that what they are? Radar antennas? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I suddenly just felt very silly saying that, so I'm not sure if that's what they're called. Uh, and then, of course, we have the shield here. Uh, still just falls off, but that's going to be fixed when I glue it. Um, these are the pieces that I cut out of plastic card that you saw me working on, and then just pop them in there. Plastic card, plot plate, whatever you want to call it. Uh, polystyrene sheeting. It's all the same. Uh, so now that's in there with roughly the same amount of detail that was in there before, just missing a couple little things that I didn't really didn't really need. Uh, so that will look just dandy when it's put on and then we have the cannon as well and the cannon I did make a couple extra changes to uh, this part here the little ray dome I did put a piece of plastic card behind it uh, just because it was hollow so I didn't really didn't really want that to be hollow I rescribed some panel lines in this thing just just to deepen the channels a little bit because they were getting a little uh, a little worn down from all my sanding. I added these little uh, plastic card brackets on the back of the gun here and then it's just completely flat on the bottom where it really looks like it should have some three-dimensionality to it so just pop some plastic card in there and then uh, sanded that as well. Uh, and then the fluted barrel or vented barrel. I'm gonna say fluted because I like the word fluted. It's a fun word. Uh, and then of course I actually drilled out the actual barrel as well but I think it looks pretty good. Uh, once it's painted, it'll look much better, I imagine. <laughs> and speaking of painting, that is next on the dock, and you can see this is my uh, this is my little little paint station here with all of my colors separated as to what they need to be painted in. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to get a move on on here because this is uh, this is going to be a very interesting kit with a lot of uh, detail painting, which is one of my favorite parts of painting a model kit. So. So we're gonna get this primed up and painted, uh, but we're gonna do that in video numero dos because this is already taking quite a bit of time 
and I think the video will just go on forever otherwise. So join me next time where we paint this kit and then we'll do a full turnaround and I'll show you about, you know, I'll show you what I, what I got on and done. Uh, so we'll do painting and decals and stuff next time. So that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching my video, everybody. I'll do my best to make more content for you. In the meantime, check out bchobbies.com. Get yourself some model kits, get yourself some tools and supplies. If you have any questions about those, ask them down below in the comments because I'm happy to help you on your hobby journey. And check back next time as we do a step-by-step -step painting guide on this kit, which will be kind of like a general purpose paint tutorial. It's gonna cover a lot of basics, uh, like reverse washing. It's gonna cover uh, how I airbrush things. And again, this is gonna be how I paint the kit. Uh, so that's it's not the only way, it's just how I do it. And that might be helpful for you. So happy multi-denominational winter holiday, everybody. Give your moms a hug, take care of one another, and I'll see you guys next time on Liam's Hobby Room. <laughs>